<laughs> you know, it, you, you just can't. You just I, I can't, think it's, it's you just it's, can't get your head around that. It, but it's also like I, I think, uh, and that's you know always been you know this is a side uh, Kari Fraser thing. Like I've I've always found media fascinating, kind of connected to propaganda and what people can believe, and just sometimes the lack of critical thinking skills that we're exercising because. I know in America, you know, here, you know, you're hustling, mm-hmm. bustling, you're, 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 mm-hmm. you know, you're taking care, of, you got your job, you're taking care of your kids, coming, covering your student loan, you know, you may be yeah. volunteer someplace on the weekend and, you know, you don't have much to, to go on. And then, you know, you have the posture and, and I often talk about this, uh, you know, uh, Nazism is big on this, but even, you know, Stalin was big on this or, or many leaders, uh, the, the Vatican, I think a lot of them get it from that, the pageantry of it. You mm-hmm. know, you have these big open spaces, tall ceilings, uh, uh, red or blue, uh, mm-hmm. triggering different things. And this person giving you a speech and it's like, OK, everything in this mm-hmm. looks as if this is a, a expert based opinion. On something I should be perceiving. It's authoritative. Yes. It's not like he's in pajamas or something, you know, and and even those messagings are are, it's a subtext in understanding Mm -hmm. to not even say, you know, Mm -hmm. what's going on. Mm -hmm. The whole uh, George W. Bush, you know, the Mm -hmm. the the we won speech from (laughs) from the naval base. And it's like you won what? Mm -hmm. Uh, And and that kind of leads more to to now. Yeah. Some of these other points, U.S. military spending compared to the rest of the world. What's the relationship between the U.S. Mm -hmm. and spending so much money Mm -hmm. on war? Like it was a it was something in this where you said that uh, right now and this is last year, the U.S. spent seven hundred and seventy eight billion dollars military spending. So that's very troubling being the, the crisis that this nation was in. Sure. In 2020. And then you look at the next nine countries and add them all up. The United States spends more than the rest, the next nine countries in the world. And Russia's down to about the number four. The fifth. Is it four or five? Number four at yep. uh, 61.7 61. billion. Yeah. So yeah. that's like so almost like, what is that? That's It's 12 and a half times more spent by the United States than Russia on its military. Russia has half the population of the United States. It spends one twelfth of what the United States spends on the military. It has a handful of bases around its border and one mm-hmm. in Syria. The United States has uh, various various years, you know, it, the number fluctuates a bit, but four to five hundred bases and uh, ports and camps uh, around the world. And like we said, those are the ones that are yeah. explicit. Yes, and those are the overt ones. Yes, right? the overt And ones. you yeah, look yeah, at overt, that map, the covert, how many of them are in Africa? How many in South America? Yeah. How many in the, in the Pacific Ocean nations? You know, they're they're all they circle the globe. It's like the British Empire. They said the sun never set on the British Empire. Well, the American has a has a world system, and now they're escalating against China. They formed a four nation pact: uh, Australia, India. Um, uh, uh, I think Britain and the United States uh, to, to try and uh, contain uh, China, mm-hmm. and then they decide to also, you know, go at Russia. If they could take over R- Russia, if they could collapse the regime through this crisis in Russia, then they could use Russia. If they could put a born Boris Yeltsin type of character that they helped get elected in, you know, the early '90s to be run Russia then they could go after China. And, and, and I like that you said that because this is all kind of under the pretense of the U.S. is claiming that it is protecting Ukraine's sovereignty, mm-hmm. which even the Ukrainian president has questioned. That's correct. So this has been such a unique debate because I, I'm looking at our president, uh, Joe Biden, mm-hmm. give speeches saying, the people in Ukraine want freedom. And then I'm looking at the Ukrainian president saying, look, we do not want war. That's right. Like, it's almost like I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. cool here. You mm-hmm. know, like mm-hmm. uh, and, and then Joe Biden's like, oh, no, nah, he don't know what's best for him. That's right. That's right. And, Repeatedly. And how like. <laughs> you know, so it's like it, it really throws my critical thinking off, kind of, because it's like I'm trying to dig deeper and even understand why is Joe Biden 
so concerned about you, the the sovereignty in the Ukraine, when especially as a black man in America, mm -hmm. I'm looking every day mm -hmm. uh, uh, with these uh, just known as you talk about these Nazi. I mean, it's it's Nazi gangs mm -hmm. inside of most police departments. Yes, right. You know, right. So it's like yeah. <laughs> sovereignty in Ukraine. Yeah. What about yeah. sovereignty but here? Remember when we had the big four? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Up to sixty seven. Started in the 1920s, the big four in the Detroit Police Department, re, they, re, they went down and directly recruited them out of the South, which mm -hmm. means they were Klansmen, probably. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's, that, was, uh, that was home. Uh, they, um, you know, Joe, Joe Biden is do, doing more to take Ukraine Ukraine is considered a pivot point. It's got a large population. It's got a large agricultural uh, base, um, and it has uh, it has uh, it's an access point for energy. Uh, you know, natural gas and oil. It, it's bordered on the Black Sea, uh, and uh, it's considered strategically important for controlling the continent. Hmm. And uh, it has been seen that way for war planners from. Uh, not just the United States, but Britain and others, that ultimately you need to control Ukraine. Hmm. And um, uh, Ukraine really was historically part of Russia. It wasn't a separate country. Um, I think, uh, you know, they were, it's really a 20th century creation, okay? It's, uh, and, and that's happened so, in many places. And, so, we've seen. and a lot of Ukraine is still Russian in terms of its ethnicity and language speaking, the eastern part. Mm -hmm. And that's why when the United States got involved and didn't like the, pre the president of Ukraine, they had him overthrown. And that's going to lead us back to our Nat the Nazi links again. Uh, they had him overthrown. And then the people in the East who were ethnic Russians said, hey, we don't want to be part of this Nazi government. They knew who, they knew who the actors were. These guys were wearing the symbols of the German SS Panzer Division that raped Ukraine in World War II. Mm. <laughs> okay? So when they saw these guys wearing the, those patches, the, you, you didn't have to it, say it, a word. It'd be they like knew what they the, were. it's the Confederate they, flag right. here. That's, that's exactly so it, right. So it, it would be seeing that's the right. Confederate flag here. Yeah. And these guys also, by the way, did wear Confederate flags and yeah. in, 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 in their political organizations that were, you know, mm. death squads also have political organizations in addition to all these paramilitary the way, apparatus. Um, the and, way Dylan Roof was wearing the, uh, the, 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 the patches of, of, of the occupation of apartheid mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when he shot and murdered those people mm -hmm. <laughs> in that church in South Carolina. Right. Yep. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you so know, this so symbolism, they have, handshakes, they have it yeah. there. And so these guys see this and they said, hey, we're, we're separating from this government. We don't want to be part of this anymore. The U.S. Embassy and the Secretary Assistant State Department put the new government together after they overthrew the old one in 2014. OK. Mm -hmm. And they said, we're done. We're out. And they formed these republics and they split off. Uh, and so uh, the United States sent the, the, these Nazi formation, to, uh, and I'm going to use the Azov Battalion as the name because they were, when we talked earlier about the organization of Ukrainian nationalists that operated in World War II and did the mass murders uh, in World War II and formed military divisions. To, they even formed an SS division that, that uh, operated at, near the end of World War II in Ukraine. That organization, led by Stefan Bandera, then, um, uh, you know, evolved into n new political names. They, they became uh, under the umbrella of the Central Intelligence Agency, and they were doing World War operations. Now, I'll just tell you this. I had my own experience with them. Uh, I went to these world conferences that were being organized with the Ukrainian nationalists, mm -hmm. the Latin American death squads. The dictatorships of uh, uh, South Korea and Taiwan and uh, European Nazis. Mm. That's how I got to know who these people were. Mm. And I met them. I met the U Romanian Iron Guard. I mm. met all these people. I interviewed them. I talked with them. And then I did my research that I 
you know, and I, I which I had started a year or two before, and uh, just really got deep into this hidden history of East Europe. And in the United States, they they never really talked about what happened on the Eastern Front. No, because then that starts exposing things and bringing people to ask questions. You know. Um, but, uh, you know, and a lot of these people, as, as is known, is brought into the United States. Uh, they brought 10,000 Latvians in the United States who were part of S SS and German formations, German-controlled police units, and settled them in Cleveland, Chicago, Detroit, uh, Pittsburgh, you know. And, um, that's, and Latvia is a small country, just two and a half million people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, same with the Ukrainians, same with the Romanians, same with the Bulgarians, same with Germans themselves, you know. Uh, the, since the Poles had, were exterminated by Germany, there weren't m many from the Polish uh, yeah. uh, uh, world that came. Um, and the Croatians, the, the most scandalous murderers of all, uh, the Slovakian the Holinka Guard of the Slovakia, which was the Nazi formation of Slo Slovakia, also tied to the Vatican, is headed by a Monsignor of the Church. Hmm. Um, you know, th th this this all gets resettled, and so uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, so I met these people that came from all over the world. Hmm. They 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 brought in uh, Holden Roberto, and. Um, uh, I don't think they brought in Budalese, but all, all these uh, people who were running military operations in alliance with the apartheid regime against the revolutionary and independence forces of Southern Africa, against the MPLA in Ang Angola, you know, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 Roberto, and they tried to bring in Renamo. Uh, which was, you know, just doing scorched earth in Mozambique and uh, working with the Rhodesian regime and the South African regime, the white supremacist mm. regimes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the State Department wouldn't let them because the United States, and this is a Reagan State Department, didn't want their name associated with Renamo because they were just going in and massacring villages to destabilize mm. the Mozambique government. Mm. Uh, an estimated 100,000 death toll. Hmm. And uh, so that's th th that. That's that. These were all coming together and holding meetings, in one in San Diego, the next year in Dallas, and so I, I, I feel when we tried to tell the story, and I helped some people write a book about it. I gave them all the, the data and the information and so forth, and the, all the fascists and Nazis and so forth, and uh, we couldn't get. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you a quick, a quick story. Ed Bradley was a producer for 60 Minutes yeah. for years. Mm -hmm. I had a meeting with Ed Bradley and his uh, producers mm -hmm. and told them the whole story about uh, the Nazi ties. And yeah. There was an ethnic arm of the Republican Party composed entirely of these Nazis. Mm. And it was an official f function of the Republican National Committee. Mm. And I gave them the documentation on it. And I even showed them one of their booklets where they praised a Nazi holiday. Yeah. And his, his producers, uh, really sharp, young black women, they all looked at me and said, we are going to do this story. <laughs> mm. Right? And then they called me up a week later that we were told to get off the story. Mm. And they were they were almost in shock about it. I could I could I, I, you know what I'm saying. I mean, I'm just as, telling as a like I say as as a person that and it's so weird because I can mm -hmm. sometimes be labeled ah oh, that's conspiracy or conspiracy mm -hmm. theorist. It's like sometimes I don't even know if this is conspiracy. Just knowing some of the things that has happened with uh, mm -hmm. the Contras, mm -hmm. the things mm -hmm. that I've seen happen with uh, I mean just right before our, my eyes mm -hmm. and like you say the mm -hmm. authoritarian posture. I believe disorients many from questioning certain things. Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing I have to bring into question. 